successful and he is admitted to uh, Belasel, the university. Art Academy, yes. Yes, an art academy in, in Jerusalem and um, he does, he's very successful as a student there. Yes. Yes. Actually, it start, yes, it slowly, slowly, it starts at the beginning when he adopts the, 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 when he first uses the name of Jonathan uh, after the books and the, and the, and the music and uh, the clothes. It's because he works also during the day in, uh, uh, um, in uh, as a, um, uh, a dishwasher actually in a restaurant, yeah. and it's known that if 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 you are an Arab, it's almost impossible to to be a waiter in a restaurant. So actually, so actually he just wants to be a waiter, and that's the reason that he says I am Jewish because he's sick of uh, yeah. of uh, working in the kitchen like most of the Arabs do in. Uh, in, in Jerusalem, and yes, it's it's um, it's a very complicated story, and actually, it, it is some kind also examining uh, uh, an examination also for how art uh, uh, is received by the audience. How can we? Is it possible at all to disconnect art or literature from from the writer, from mm -hmm. the background of the of the nation, the nationality of the writer or the artist? In this case, a photographer. So one of the one of the things that I wanted to make also uh, to, to to make a mere, a mere deal with art. Uh, uh, so his art is received not just uh, not an Arab, but but uh, as an artist, just an artist, with, without this uh, uh, cultural background. And of course, m maybe more than anything else to examine how can you fit and how can you belong in Israeli society. Mm -hmm. And n no, there is no way that you can be, unfortunately, till now, a part of Israeli society if you are not Jewish. Meaning you were born, if you were born to a Jewish mother, you are part of the society, even if you don't know, even one sentence in Hebrew and you have no idea what's happening in Israel. Mm -hmm. And the absurd of this state and the absurd of, you, of Jonathan in this case, it's, it's just a story actually, it's just a novel, is that actually an American Jew who never visited Israel can feel more Israeli than an Arab who was born there, speak the language, and all he needs is a Jewish mother. So that's the reason uh, Rachel is there, uh, Rochale, the mother of Jonathan, adapting the, 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 the Arab kid and actually giving, giving him some kind of homeland, some kind of peace. When he enters the bar, he says, I just don't want to feel the stranger anymore. I want to feel like them. Tonight I want to drink like them. Tonight I, tonight I want to, to speak like them. Tonight I want to stop being the stranger, the unwelcome stranger in the novel. Of course it's naive and it's, 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 it never happens, but it's, it's reality uh, in, in the Israeli society. Yeah. We will not uh, uncover how the novel is ending, but... Uh, oh, we did, by the way. You don't have to buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> It's happy ending, most of the Arabs die in the end. So. Yeah. <laughs> but towards the end, you managed to, to um, have a meeting. Yes. There's a meeting between the lawyer and, um, and uh, Amir, who had acquired this new Jewish identity, as you just said before. And they meet in front of the place where Jonathan the new Jonathan lives. Yes. Jonathan, by the way, is the name that was uh, signed the at the end of this, uh, so to speak, love letter. Yes. Which actually, it was not, but uh, no, it's in, he it's, feels it's, it's it in, is. In the copy of the novel, not in the, in copy the novel. In the novel. Yes, yes. Um, what about, what about, um, your plans of uh, another book? Um, Are you yes, working? Okay. Are you dealing I'm with still, the I'm still, I'm, I'm, at the it's, moment? It's, the whole story started really with, with the, at least in the novel, with, the, with this uh, note uh, in a used book. And, uh, and one of the crazy things, I do mm. take literature just like politics. Actually, it's a love story. To, to personally, I guess. And one of the sentences that my wife 
keeps telling me when I write a, a novel, every novel, I am leave me alone. I'm, I'm not a character in your novel. Yeah, so it's not use from, me as a character. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I start dreaming wow. about that, and I don't know in what language, but I dream about the characters. Is she the first reader of your texts? Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I think I, I do work uh, very close to an editor. I need an editor since the beginning. I send chapters to the editor. Even he doesn't know how it's going to continue, and I don't know yet. But yes, my wife is when she's ready, when she got time for me, uh, so she will read the novel. And um, and uh, so so it's, I think the novel starts really with a very strong uh, f fear. And uh, and uh, as I mentioned before, I really don't know what's going to happen happen next day and uh to be honest, I started with literature, and and um, and um, I, I, I wish uh, that I can can write only novels, not not uh, not for the newspaper or for, for the TV. But it's also not true because because writing for TV and for cinema, I just just finished shooting the first feature that I wrote. I'm not sure how it's going to look like, but anyway. And writing for arts, and I always worked for newspapers. It's, it 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 gives me the ability not to be forced to write a novel every year or mm -hmm. two years in order to survive economically. Yeah. So, so I'll take the, the time with novels. So I just started really a, a new journey, a new very painful journey um, to, to, a, to a new character. It's going to take me a few years to finish Is it. Is it also, and again, a story about uh, storytelling? It's because what convinces yes. me so much about this, uh, your third novel, yes. is that I feel that through reading your novel, one can learn a lot more different stuff about uh, politics mm -hmm. and Israeli society and Palestinian society because you manage to bring out um, how the people and your characters feel in these societies, how segregated they are, how much they are outsiders in their communities. Yes, although I really would very much like to see the book as a, a, a love uh, uh, jealousy story, but yes, of course, it, I, I deal with Arab characters, and it's really it's it's being not uh, uh, loyal to the characters. If if I if because being an Arab Palestinian minority in Israel, it's part of your daily life. At the beginning, I used to say that uh, when I woke up, I just say, "Oh, damn it! I have." I'm, I, I used to say that when I woke up in the morning, it's not that the first thing that shocked me is that I'm a Palestinian living in a Jewish state. Like I woke up in the morning and said, damn it, I have to take, to, to take the kids to school. But then I discovered it's not true. I, I do woke up in the morning and say, hell, I have to take the kids to school, but I'm the Arab who's taking the Arab kids to the school. So it's part of the, of the identity. So it's not political lectures, but of course the reality is there, because really, otherwise I'm, I'm not faithful to the characters. And it's very painful to be faithful uh, to the characters. So yes, now I'm dealing with with an, another story. For me, it's a, another love story. But uh, yes, it deals with someone who writes uh, biographies uh, for 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 uh, Holocaust survivors and Nakba survivors and uh, and all Israelis. And he's very much confused and mixed. And uh, but again, he's trying to find his way in this society. And he's trying to find love. And he's trying to to. To, to protect his family, um, I guess that that's the journey that mm. I'm doing. Is right there now. something like this uh, phenomenon in the, among the Palestinian people? Something that you have with the Israeli society with the Jews? Um, we speak about uh, the matter of fact that there is this conspiracy of silence from the first generation been silent towards the second generation, but the third generation would again start talking to the grandparents about the experiences of uh, the Holocaust. Is there some, some kind of uh, Nakba narrative that has the same feature, like uh, remaining silent about what happened? And is there now, are we somehow at the edge of a new 
story to be told to the youngsters? Not really. No. I again, uh, my grandmother, my grandmother never uh, hide anything of the stories. It's not written. And it's not. Uh, uh, no, no, no. We cannot compare uh, the situation. It was always the the Palestinian pain was always open. Was always there, and it was clear, and uh, and uh, no, no one needs to hide because it's different. Because because first of all, first of all, it's, it was also. F it's it's people. At least I know that uh, the survivors who who arrived to Israel, it was for them. Okay, we are coming to. We are creating a new thing, totally new thing, and we are not going to uh, to talk about it. And in many many ways, some some many of the people who survived, I guess, felt uh, very sorry. Of the, about the fact that they survived because they had survived. Yes, and I, I, now because of my research on the third novel, I do read a lot of stories about uh, about uh, Holocaust, uh, uh, both novelist writers and also uh, personal uh, memorials. It's called them, you no, know, this uh, mm -hmm. the testimonies. So it's really scary, and sometimes it it, it looks like it's we so, we are sorry that we survived, and also because sometimes it feels that they don't. Want to remember this the, the the human being, if at all, that they used to be during this very very difficult episode uh, period of time. So no, it's not the case. It's not. It's, it's mm -hmm. totally not the case. We were a little bit forced not to talk about it that much because because we used to live under military regime since the 48 uh, till 66 and living under military regime means that you are not allowed to leave your village without a permission from the uh, from the governor the from the, the Israeli army and yes there are books who uh, who claim or researchers and uh, 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 actually scholars write about this generation, my generation, uh, the third generation is more Hadora Zakuf, like the, 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 the proud generation because they, they, they dare to talk more mm -hmm. about what, what happened before. But it's because, because, because we feel more secure now to talk than our parents mm -hmm. because, because, because uh, for example, my father was an activist uh, when he was a student. He was sent to the Hebrew University in '66, and he was an activist in the Communist Party. And he was arrested in something called. He was uh, sent to prison, I remember. Yes, for two years and a half in something called uh, uh, um, uh, uh, administrative detention, which is which is still happening actually in Israel. It means that we don't have to charge him. We don't really have to bring him to court. And every six months we can renew. Uh, uh, his jail, I don't know how it's called. So he spent two years and a half in jail because of his activities. Mm -hmm. So there was this generation who were so afraid of the Israeli uh, authorities that didn't dare to talk about what happened to Openly. us. Yes. Mm -hmm. So now they're talking about this third generation who dares more and talks more and uh, and 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 can also. Although it was really, really very, very, very difficult the last year, Nakba, for example, I think for the first time, Arab students in Tel Aviv University uh, uh, demonstrated, and uh, and uh, in the Nakba day, it was a huge, uh, a huge issue. I'm not sure that it happened before, for example, because there is a law in Israel for forbidding uh, uh, mentioning the Nakba, and unfortunately, it's so not true because for most of the Israelis, if you talk about the Nakba or the Palestinian catastrophe or the Palestinian story, it means that you want to destroy the state of Israel, which is not true. It's just recognizing the suffering of the other. And they truly think that if we want one day to establish something like a normal state, an equal state, and a real democracy there, we should at least recognize the suffering of the other, first of all, and maybe say sorry, and doesn't no way means that you want to destroy the state of Israel. Um, I, I assure you that, at least uh, when it comes to me and then try to establish something else. And actually this is the story of the third novel. How can I, as a writer, 
in, in, in the novel, not me now, establish one story for 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 that can be accepted for for uh, Jewish people and Palestinian people sharing the same land. Mm -hmm. How can I bring one story that contains both stories, both narratives, and not only one narrative who cannot live with the, with this, with the other narrative? Now there is the Israeli narrative and the, uh, that can, cannot contain at all any kind of a Palestinian narrative. So the Nakba didn't happen. It's just a lie, mm -hmm. uh, for, uh, unfortunately, for many, many um, uh, Israelis. But there so is it's one, a struggle. There is one center for humanistic education in the north of Israel, um, near um, Akko. They also have a, a, a department for Janusz Korczak and they have a department for a children's holocaust museum yes. there. And I know from Raya Kalisman, who runs this place, the Center for Humanistic Education, that they are trying now, and they have tried for years now, to bring together Palestinian Arab youngsters, aged yes. 15 to 20, and Israelis. Jewish Israeli youngsters and they start by telling the stories of their grandparents. Yes. And the first aim of all this storytelling is to create awareness for the other. Yes. And to create more humanistic understanding for this. Yes. So are you on that line? Yes. Can you look yes, into uh, your next novel? Uh, uh, not really. It's not, it, it's not that my protagonist is aware of that. It's by mistake he establishes <laughs> one story for both nations because he's confused and he's totally in love. And So at one point he mixes between the Jewish stories and the Arab stories. So it's, uh, it's, not, it's, it's not educational uh, thing. Yes, but unfortunately it's really very rare. Uh, for example, also I do send my my kids to to, to the bilingual In school. Jerusalem. That yes, but it's it's very very small project, which is wonderful. Mm -hmm. So they have the the Independence Day from one hand and the Nakba Day from the other hand. They they study in both languages. They and they feel equal. The problem is that we it's very very small, and unfortunately it's it's always difficult to find. I'm supposed to be half. The kids are Arabs and the other half 